Good morning, dear students. Today, we will go through the second part of our lesson, Linear Momentum. In this session, we will study Newton's second law and apply Newton's second law to determine the momentum and the velocity of a system. Theorem of Linear Momentum, Newton's Second Law For a system constituted of particles, each of constant mass, we have already known that the linear momentum of this system is P equals M times Vg, where M is the mass of the system and Vg is the velocity of its center of mass. Now, deriving both sides of this equation, we get the derivative of P by dt equals the derivative of mvg by dt equals m multiplied by the derivative of vg by dt. And we know that dvg by dt equals ag. So dp by dt equals mag equals summation f external. Consequently, Newton's second law states that dp by dt equals summation f external. So the, the derivative of the linear momentum by time equals the summation of the external forces acting on a system. Let us solve this application. Application 2.3 on your book. A solid of mass M equals 5 kg can move on a trajectory situated in a horizontal plane. So we have a solid moving on a horizontal trajectory. It starts from rest, that is V0 equals 0. Under the action of two forces, F1 equals 5i plus 15j, and F2 equals 10i plus 10j in SI unit. Part A. Determine at any instant t the linear momentum of the solid in the frame OIJ. So in part A, we are asked to determine P of the system. In part B, deduce the velocity of its center of inertia as a function of time t. When solving any problem of mechanics, it is advisable to follow the following steps. First, specify the studied system. In this case, it is a solid. Choose a suitable inertial frame or suitable frame of reference, which is here, OIJ. Third step, list the external applied forces. In this problem, what are the forces acting on a box moving on a horizontal plane? The forces are F1, F2, its weight Mg, and the normal reaction N. Where Mg and N have the same line of action, opposite direction, and same magnitude. So Mg plus N equals 0. Now, applying Newton's second law, we get summation of external equals dp by dt. So dp by dt equals f1 plus f2 equals 5i plus 15j plus 10i plus 10j. That is dp by dt equals 15i plus 25j. The fifth very important point is that you should specify the initial conditions. At t0 equals 0, the velocity vector v0 equals 0. Why we need here the initial conditions? Because we will go through antiderivative calculation. The last step, deduce the unknown, that is, deduce the linear momentum of the system. We have here dp by dt equals 15i plus 25j. From maths, use the integral to find the linear momentum. 
So if dp by dt equals 15i plus 25j, then p equals 15ti plus 25tj plus p0. But we don't have here an initial linear momentum because v0 equals 0. So p0 equals 0. Consequently, p vector equals 15ti plus 25tj. In part B, we are asked to deduce the velocity vector of the center of mass of this system. So, we know that P equals M times Vg. So, Vg equals P over M. That is 15Ti plus 25Tj divided by 5 because the mass of the system equals 5. So, Vg equals 3Ti plus 5tj. Another application. An object A of mass ma equals 2 kg is launched at t0 equals 0 with an initial velocity of magnitude v0 equals 10 m per second. From the bottom towards the top of a long inclined plane making an angle 30 with the horizontal. Another object B of mass MB equals 3 kg is released from rest. What does this mean, released from rest? That the initial velocity of B equals 0. From the top of an inclined plane at T0 equals 0. The magnitude of the friction force exerted by the inclined on each object is F equals F equals 5n, 5 in Newton. The x-axis is parallel to the incline and oriented positively downwards. Use g equals 10 meter per second square and neglect air resistance. I have just highlighted all the important given to be used later on. So we have a particle or object A released with initial velocity upward an inclined plane and an object B from the top is released without initial velocity downwards. Part 1. Apply Newton's second law to determine the expression of the algebraic value of the linear momentum of the following three systems part A, B and C. So in part 1 we are asked to determine the expression of P of the system made up of object B of a system made up of object A during its ascending and then we should determine the linear momentum of the system made up of A and B during the ascending of A. In part 2, we should use parts 1A and 1B to determine again the algebraic value of the linear momentum of the center of mass of the system AB. In part 3, determine the time needed by A to stop. So we should determine the time T when VA becomes 0. In part 4, determine the algebraic value of the velocity of the center of mass of the system AB at T equals The solution of this system. 1. We will begin with system B. The external forces acting on system B are its weight, mbg, the normal force, nb, and the friction, fb. So we have here on object B three external forces. Now, applying Newton's second law, on the system made up of particle B only, we get summation F external equals dP by dt. Please concentrate because this method will be used in the two other parts. Then, MBG plus NB plus FB equals dP by dt. We should always project the vectors along the x-axis when we are asked to determine the magnitude of the linear momentum. So, the derivative of mb 
on the positive x-axis is zero because MB is perpendicular to the x-axis. The projection of FB on x-axis is minus FB because FB is opposite to the positive sense of x-axis. And the projection of MBG is MBG sine alpha. Now, so MBG sine alpha plus 0 minus FB equals DP by DT. Then we get DP of B by DT equals 10. Then DP equals 10 DT. Now, concentrate P. We make antiderivative on both sides of the equation. So, antiderivative of dp equals antiderivative of 10 dt. Antiderivative of dp equals p of b. And antiderivatives of 10 is 10t. And we add the initial condition of the linear momentum of b at t equals 0. But the linear momentum of B at T equals 0 is 0 since B starts from rest. So what we get? P of B equals 10 T. With the same method and strategy, we solve part B. System A. Taking system A, we should know that the external forces acting on A are the friction force, it is downwards because A is going and ascending upwards. The normal, the normal NA and the weight MAG. Also, applying Newton's second law, summation at external equals dP by dt. Then, MAG plus NA plus FA equals the derivative of the linear momentum dP of A by dt. Also here, we will project the vectors along the x-axis. Look at the figure. The projection of Na on the x-axis is 0, because Na as Nb is perpendicular to the x-axis. The projection of Fa on x-axis is plus Fa, because Fa has the same direction as the positive x-axis. The projection of MAG on x-axis is MAG sine alpha. So we get dPA by dt equals 15. Then dPA equals 15 dt. Antiderivative on both sides. We get PA equals 15 t plus PA0. The initial condition of the linear momentum of A at t equals 0. But PA at t equals 0 doesn't equal 0. It has a value. It equals MA V0 equals 2 times minus 10. Why minus 10? Because A was ascending upward and V0 is upward as well. Consequently, V0 has opposite direction of, on, of the positive x-axis. So, projecting it on the x-axis, we get minus 10 and not 10. So, PA0 equals minus 20 kilogram meter per second. Then, PA equals 15T minus 20. In part C, we are taking the system made up of two particles together, A and B. What are the external forces acting on this system? They are MAG and NA, MBG, MB, FA, FB. We'll go through the summation of external equals dPG by dt. What is a G? It is the center of mass of the system AB. We get MAG plus NA plus MBG plus MB plus FA plus FB equals dPG by dt. And we project, we get dPG by dt equals 25. So dPG equals 25 dt making antiderivatives we get pg equals 25t plus p0 here what is p0 
it is the initial linear momentum of the system made up of A and B. So it is minus 20 plus 0, minus 20 from part B and plus 0 from part A. Then Pg equals minus 20 kilogram meter per second. Consequently, the expression of the linear momentum of the system A and B is Pg equals 25T minus 20. In part B, you are, or on number 2, sorry, in part 2, you are supposed to write the expression of Pg as a vector. We all know that the linear momentum of a center of system of particles equals the summation of the linear momenta of all the particles. So Pg equals Pa vector plus Pb vector. It is 15t minus 20, we copy it multiplied by i because it is on the x-axis plus 10t j 10t uh, sorry multiplied by i it is 25t minus 20i therefore pg without a vector equals 25t minus 20 si unit in part 3 we need to calculate the time needed by a to stop that is the time needed to get VA equals 0 or PA equals 0. Here we have the expression PA equals 15T minus 20. A stops when P of A equals 0. That is when 15T minus 20 equals 0. Therefore, after calculating this equation, we get T equals 1.33 seconds. Now, in part 4, we need the uh, speed of the center of mass RG at t equals 0 0.5 seconds. What is the expression of the linear momentum of G? It is Pg equals 25t minus 20 equals ma plus mbvg. This is a formula which we have already taken in the first session. So the linear momentum of the system equals the summation of the mass of the all particles of the system multiplied by Vg. So 25t minus 20 equals 5Vg. Then Vg equals 5t minus 4. At t equals 0 0.5 seconds, Vg equals 5 multiplied by 0 0.5 minus 4. Therefore, Vg equals 15 meet, minus, sorry, 1.5 meter per second. This is the end of the session, dear students. Wish you a nice day and thank you for listening.